With beautiful artistic visuals and an emotional storyline, Europa is a short and sweet platforming game full of exploration and easy to navigate puzzles perfect for the casual gamer. Hey guys, Ramen King here. Today we're reviewing Europa from developers Helder Pinto and Chozabu with a huge thanks to publisher Future Friends Games for generously granting me a key to review this fantastic game. On the moon Europa, a lush terraformed paradise in Jupiter's shadow, an android named Z sets out in search of answers. You'll be running, gliding, and flying across Europa's landscape, solving mysteries in the ruins of a fallen utopia, and discover the story of the last human alive. Europa is very story-driven. At the start of the game, we're immediately introduced to our main character Z, while Z's father, Adam, narrates an entry from a journal that he's left for him after his death. Throughout the game, the player journeys through the different ruins of the civilization that once was on Europa, and has to find the scattered pages of the journal that describes what had happened on Europa, like how Z got there, what Adam and the humans did there, and some details on the extraordinary mechanical animals that thrive on Europa. These mechanical creatures are known as the Gardeners. Besides the collectible journal pages, there are other collectibles to look out for, such as crystal stars that allow Z to levitate higher and longer, and emeralds that you can collect for fun. These three things encourage and challenges the player to really explore the areas that they come across thoroughly. Since journal pages are essential to learn more of the human race's history on Europa, these are easily found and recognized by a glowing yellow pillar, whereas crystal stars and emeralds are a little more hidden away in high places and inside buildings. While the land seems open and endless, each region actually has a boundary made of clouds that forces you backward, so you won't be able to stray too far from where you need to go, making it a little more linear and easier to figure out how to progress to the next area. As you explore, there are a ton of gardeners and animals that you can find. You'll eventually obtain a sketchbook and be able to draw the animals you come across in it. There's no real health or damage in this game, but while most gardeners are friendly, there are some aggressive ones that can hit you with projectiles, and will minorly inconvenience you in the form of slowed movement or sapping your stored flight energy. There are a couple points where the enemies were pretty irritating, but you're otherwise able to run away from them pretty easily. Because of how story-driven the game is, Europa isn't too difficult and offers players a casual platforming experience. Controls feel really good and take a bit of getting used to with having to charge or jump, but otherwise feel very natural. As I said in the beginning of the video, you're able to run, glide, and fly by utilizing the machine on your back called the Zephyr. It kind of looks like Mega Man's Mega Buster and it even charges like it too, but it allows you to fly instead of shooting Mega Lemons. There are some puzzles in this game, but nothing too challenging. They're simpler but engaging, such as having to jump to get blocks to rotate and create a path, or having to explore and collect light orbs in the area to unlock a door. I enjoy simpler puzzles like this, because sometimes being stuck on one puzzle for hours just isn't fun. Europa's graphics are absolutely breathtaking, with the art being very Studio Ghibli inspired, as observed from the bright colors of the environment and different gardeners roaming about in the meadows. There are plenty of cinematics and a lot of opportunities that really give the player a chance to stop and take in the land and witness the beauty of Europa's world. The music in this game is equally as beautiful and relaxing, but sometimes builds up into something more emotional and exciting, especially in the sequences where you have to fly around, and really adds to the experience. Overall, Europa provides a fantastic experience, perfect for anybody who likes art similar to Miyazaki movies, something shorter, easier, and more on the comfy side, and a great story. My playthrough was a little under 3 hours, and that's with finding half the emeralds, which is nice as somebody who enjoys shorter games. Europa released a couple days ago on October 11th, and is currently available on both Switch and Steam with a demo available, so I definitely suggest checking this game out. As usual, if you enjoyed the review, give it a big ol' thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, and let me know what you thought of Europa and whether you'll be picking it up. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next review video.